Hello. Good morning to you. You live in a shoe. Pirelli. Good morning to you. You live in a shoe. Tucker. Tucker, you need your eyes cut. You can't even see around your eyes, can you, bud? Hello, Mr. PB. And how are you today? The mice are in the kitchen and they want to see you play. I am currently putting away my like. Um, I have actually had a very productive day today. So it is 3.15. I finished Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express last night. And I am now reading, I don't know who it's by, but it's called Emma in the Night. And it's about this girl that is well, these two sisters that are kidnapped and they come back. And I'm loving it so far because you know I love a good kidnapping story. Then I went and got my hair cut. I only got like four and a half hours of sleep. So it's crazy town that I'm feeling so energized. Let's get physical. I have had my coffee already today though. Then I went and got my hair cut this morning. And um, while I was there, a friend of ours that I know from the salon, she just had a song. Let me sit over here so the light's better. She just had a song released. You guys, and I'm not just saying this. This is not my friend Kayla from before. This is a different girl. This is Jasmine. I am going to link it below. On, it's free on SoundCloud. Okay, you don't even have to pay for it. It is like, I felt like I was sitting in some jazz club, like in New York City. Um, it is so fantastic. I played it for Tanya, and Tanya was like, where is she singing here in town? I would go see her. So, um, I'm going to link it below. Please go check it out. Um, she just wants to get people, she just wants people to listen to it. So, you know, I think that's fantastic when we have artists that just want people to listen to their stuff or look at their work. They're not looking at trying to make any money over it or anything, you know? Come on. Come on, bud. Aww. Don't cry. We're spilling milk, Tucker. So, um, then Tanya texted me and she was like, do you want to go get our feet done? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, well, I'll take you to go get your, get your feet done. So she treated me. We got pedicures. My feet look, I won't show you, but they look nice. <laughs> Y'all want to see, you guys are like, why would we want to see your feet, Peter? Okay, there's my nice feet. <laughs> anyway, it was so funny because when we left, I had shoes on and Tanya like wore those yellow things out, you know, where they were like painting your toes because she just had her toes painted. Aww. And, um... Then I took her home so she could take a nap and I went and got Einstein bagels and then I came home and I was so tired. I was like, I'm gonna like eat and then lay down and take a nap with the dogs. But I came home and I kind of got my second wind and so I just filmed all of my videos today. I was real excited about doing it. And um, Boo and Tucker and Pee Pee helped me with it. And uh, yeah, and so it's 3.15. My videos are filmed. I have lunch in there. I'm gonna eat while I upload videos. PP is so cold. Do you see him over there? He's like so cold in this house. And the house is 70. It's not cold at all. But anyway, um, he like walked outside and then like walked right back inside. <laughs> He's like, no, I don't wanna be out there. Um, I'm watching some movie called Twilight. It's with Paul Newman. I've never heard of this movie before in my entire life. Have you heard of it, Boo Rarely? You haven't, have you? You don't know this movie. Maybe I do remember seeing this movie with my mom like years ago. It's got that woman in it, Stalker Channing. Oh, I love her. Do you guys like Stalker Channing? Oh, Susan Strandon's in it, too. I think I actually do remember this movie. So anyway, um, I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to take a little nap with the dogs, and then I get up, and I'm going to read this afternoon, and um, I'm taking a break from writing today, and then um, we have a marriage counseling session tonight. We haven't had one in like three or four weeks because our counselor said that we should probably like slow down a little bit because things were going so well. He's like, I don't think you guys seem to come. I'm like, okay, that's fine, because I don't want to spend the money that much. I got three messages from people yesterday asking me what my counselor's name was. And these three people that watch my videos that are in the Indianapolis area, and they're like, um, you speak so highly of your counselor. I want to go see him. Who is he? So he's fantastic. So if you have any interest and you live in the Indianapolis area, I'll find you. I don't know that he's taking new clients, honestly. So... Um, but, you know, I believed this for years with going to a counselor. Like, I was just talking on my so-called Healthy Life channel about the importance of self-care. I really, really think it's important, you know, 
to talk about self-care and people are like, oh, well, you're a life coach and you were a counselor. Why do you go to a counselor? Well, I go to a counselor because I have issues of my own that I need to talk about, you know, and individually when, so every, we were going to marriage counseling, um, once a week, once every other week. And then in between, like Alex would see him individually and I would see him individually. And at that time, like I was working on a lot of grief issues with my mom, just needing to talk about that stuff, you know? And feeling kind of orphaned in life and, you know, that it's just like me and my dad and my stepmom on that side of the family and my aunt is gone and talking about that. And it's just been a lot of grieving over the year. So it's been really healthy for me to grieve it in a therapeutic environment to be able to, like, have my feelings and know that feelings aren't facts um, and to take care of myself. Um, you know, so it's been really healthy for me to have a place to just, like, go and unload and um, it's interesting because one of the things that, what, what is it, honey? What is it? One of the things that came out as a result is that I have found that, and this is kind of what I'm working on with uh, my counselor right now, is that I kind of have, I think because my mom died at a young age, I have this impending like fear of like death at a young age for myself and not really being scared to die, but being sad almost kind of about endings, if that makes sense. and. I find myself consumed at times thinking about like the dogs being gone or my next family member that's going to be gone, things like that. You know, will it be my dad? Will it be my uncle? And you know, how much more alone am I going to be? Is it just going to be me, me and Alex? And you know what I mean? Like, and I don't want to think that way. I want to, you know, live in gratitude about the days that I do have with the people that I love, not look at, is it one of my last days? Does that make sense? And it's a double-edged sword to some degree. So those are things that I'm like working on with my counselors, like kind of getting rid of that fear and working through that fear and realizing it and having some awareness with it. So it's always like a really healthy thing, you know? And the things that Alex and I are working on now are just like this book that we started reading called Hold Me Tight by Sue Johnson. It, I would recommend it to any couple out there. It is fantastic. And years ago, Alex and I read The Five Love Languages. Um, we read it together. That book helped our marriage. I was going to say save our marriage. It didn't save our marriage. That, that book helped our marriage so much, you know, that like, um, really understanding the way that we each speak differently. And I think opening, like also opening our eyes to the fact that I thought Alex was two languages to find out that he was two other languages. You know, if you guys have not read the five level languages, you can read it for like coworkers or friends or family and loved ones. It's, it's really a good book. Very basic to read too, but hold me tight by Sue Johnson is amazing. And you know, it's interesting because like Alex and I were in bed last night and we were just laying there talking about, um, some family stuff that's going on. And one of the things that it's really done is it's really opened Alex up emotionally. And he got very upset last night just talking about these things. And, but you know, one of the things that's different is that he allows me to like, you know, hold him and hold his hand today and be more intimate emotionally with him. And it's like opened us up on all these different levels. And uh, it's been fantastic. And I'm really, really glad that, um, you know, what really encouraged us was that we have so many friends of ours that have marriages that we want. You know, when you see that couple and you're like, God, I want to be just like them. And every single one of them was in marriage counseling. And we're like, what's the trick? And they're like, marriage counseling. We work all of our shit out in marriage counseling. We never argue at home. And you know what? Since we have been going to marriage counseling, we don't argue at home anymore. We don't fight about stuff. You know, yesterday I joked about the dishwasher, but like, we don't argue about that. I did it. I just do it, you know? And, um, any kind of like big arguments that we have, we have in counseling. And honestly, it's totally worth the money because what we realize is the argument is never about what we think it's about. It's about some underlying issue. And then we work through that issue and then we come out and we're like, oh my God, you know? And it has brought us so close. And he said to me last night, it was funny because he turned and he kind of looked at me and he said, I'm just so glad that we're on the same team, you know? And Alex always has looked at us as a team. Like he always refers to us as a team. And, um, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's a very cool thing. And, um, it's interesting because I know that there are those people out there that are like, something must be seriously wrong with their marriage for them to be going to marriage counseling. And I think a lot of people would shy back from talking about it because they would be like, I don't want people to think that there's something wrong with my marriage. Therefore, I won't talk about it at the expense of helping those people that will go and enter marriage counseling at whatever state your marriage is in. I am willing to talk openly about it and I don't really care what people think about my marriage because I know how fantastic it is. So, you know, at times, at times, I mean, 
mean, like, no marriage is perfect. You know, I was joking. I have a friend of mine that's a YouTuber that's married as well. And, you know, both of our marriages have been scrutinized at times. And we were kind of laughing. We're like, well, anybody that's been married knows that it's no perfect storm. You know what I mean? Like, let's just be for real. So, um, I mean, there are ups and downs always. But I think that when you realize that you're in it for the long haul and you work and you're willing to work through issues is when, you know, like Alex was saying that his mom is really wanting to go to counseling because he was somebody that she thought would never enter counseling. And it was Alex's idea. And Alex is the one that like initiated it and she's seen how like emotionally open he is now and how much he's changed. And now she's like, I really want to go to counseling. I, you know, like if it's really helped you that much, like what would it help me with, you know? And I think that's it a lot of times is we don't even really know what our issues are until we're in there. And, you know, there are counselors anywhere that are affordable. If you can't afford it, you know, there are cross uh, wraparound services, you know, there are, you know, mental health, uh, in, what are they called? Like mental health services, there should be in any city that have low cost mental health. You can get on psychologytoday.com, not sponsored. Put in your zip code and you can find counselors and therapists that have a sliding fee scale. The thing I was going to say first is I wanted to say this was, I meant to say this 10 minutes ago, was that I think the thing that works the most with us is that the rapport that we have, or at least for, I can speak for myself, the rapport that I have with my counselor is fantastic. And I think it takes the fact that he's this very calm, because you know I'm not, very calm, 34-year-old, straight guy with two kids, and, um, you know, always like is willing and I think it's important for me to have somebody that's a little bit younger than me that's willing to tell me I don't know why that's important but I think that if they were older there, to some degree I might feel like I was being you know patronized but like he's willing to say things to me that I need to hear like okay like put me in my place a little bit um because I know that he cares enough about me that he wants me to get better. Does that make sense? And I think that's when you truly find a great coach, a great counselor, because anybody that's ever played athletics knows that a coach will tell you what you need to do to get better. And that's, I think, the real key to it, you know? And um, I just feel so blessed that we've found him and have him in our life now. So speaking of that, Alex and I are like on this trip planning thing for 2018 and what we're realizing is we don't have a lot of extra money because we've been putting it into marriage counseling but it's like okay <clears throat> so we can take a weekend trip to like Cincinnati and have a phenomenal time because our marriage is great you know or we can <laughs> go to two weeks to Tahiti and hate each other that never we never hated each other anyway but anyway life right you rather are you having a good day honey He's like, I sure am. When are we taking a nap? All right, you guys. Um, look, Peepee's up. Peepee, what are you doing? What is it, peeps? He said, you always pay attention to everybody else. Look, they all went up here now. You want up here, Peepee? Are you stretching, Peepee? You guys want to see Tucker? <gasps> Hello, Tucker. How are you, Tucker? He says, I'm tired, and I want you to cut my foofy, <laughs> my foofy tail. <laughs> Just me and the dogs. <laughs> I do love my nap so much. I love to like put on a movie and like put it real low, like some Alfred Hitchcock movie, like Rear Window, and then like fall asleep and take a nap. That's like my favorite thing in the entire world. I also decided, if you don't know, I meant to talk about this on my booktube channel. I also decided that I was going to listen to the audio. Of what is it? Come here, honey. my life. I also decided that I was going to listen to the audio version of To Kill a Mockingbird because I'm reading it for um, my booktube channel for a group read. And oh, look at him. Isn't he so sweet? But um, I have never listened to it on Audible before. I've only um, read it and I've read it a few times. Sissy Spacek, one of my all-time favorite actresses of life. PB, do you like Sissy Spacek? She's okay. Who are you? Um, she narrates it. And I love her. Have you guys seen Crimes of the Heart? Oh my god, with Jessica Lang, Sissy Spacek, and Diane Keaton, one of my faves. Alright, well we're gonna take a little nap now. So we will talk to you later. Okay? Love ya! Bye. Say bye, Boo Radley. He said goodbye. Say goodbye, Pee Pee. He said, leave me alone. Hello! My crazy hair. I, uh, 
trying to consolidate my trash over here. Alex and I just watched The Real Housewives of Dallas Reunion. And then we watched the first episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And he is laying in bed. Looking at snap stories or something. And I was like, well, then I'm gonna go and get a fountain coke and listen to my audiobook because I'm really into this audiobook. So I finished last night, I said this already, but I finished um, Murder on the Orient Express. And um, then Melissa called tonight. It was interesting. She's like, I really want to go see Murder on the Orient Express, which is interesting because it's not kind of like a movie that I would think that she would like. Like, she really likes horror movies. But Melissa also um, went and got all of us tickets today for, I mean, we're going to pay her back, but we are going to see Lady Gaga in Louisville next Monday. I'm so excited. We got, like, club seats. I think they were, like, $150 a piece, which... I have a really hard time spending the $150 to go see somebody in concert, but I mean, I wouldn't have it back in the day, and I never go to concerts, so I mean, we never, like, if we go to a concert, we always get media passes because of our website. Like, Alex always gets media passes. We're going to see Glantis on Sunday night. Which are DJs. I, they're, like, some of my favorites. But anyway, um, so, what is this? What did I do wrong here? What did I do wrong? Um, so I'm really excited about that. Ra 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 ra. Do you guys like Lady Gaga? Do you not like her? I just posted this picture on my Instagram. Where is it? And I said I missed the beach. From like two years ago. And I said I'm going to do a Q&A if you guys have any questions. <laughs> You're so cute. Talk about Trisha. <laughs> People are so funny with the questions that they ask on Q&As. I love doing Q&As, though. But it's like you don't want to do them all the time, you know, because I think after a while people get kind of tired of them, don't you think? I do. I'm so confused. This channel, hold on a second. interesting like I just went and I looked at this guy that I used to watch do you guys remember that guy I used to talk about on here um that uh, what's his name Zach from dude dudes and he and his boyfriend like met on Grindr I actually talked to him on the phone because he was like asking me about my experience on YouTube and he's a really nice guy but um and I had a suggestion for him I was like are you open to some suggestions and he was like yeah totally but, like, I just went and I looked on his. I look like absolute horseshit. I've been laying around the house all night long. I've got a cold. Although, I just told Alex. I said, I don't think I have a cold. I think it's allergies. Um, Because my throat doesn't... It itches. My throat itches, and I've had a runny nose. And that's consistent with allergies. And we're allergy season in Indiana right now. So, anyway. But, it's interesting. I just went and I looked at his channel, and he hasn't posted a video in three months. 
It's like crazy, like, when you like really, but I don't know, I mean like, I watched his videos, I wouldn't say that he's like a YouTuber that I like fell in love with, but there are so many, like right now it's really interesting, like I am really into Britney and Baby. She actually tweeted and said that she's like watching all my videos right now, which oh my god made my heart. But like those are the kind of like YouTubers that I get really into, that like they show us their life. Like I honest to God don't even care really about their life. Like when somebody lets me into their life, and I'm so just like, I feel like a very just normal person anyway, that I would just come over to your house and stand in your kitchen and talk and we'd have a cup of coffee, you know, and whatever and tool around. It's like today, Tanya and I, you know, we went and got our feet done and got a Coke or got a coffee. She had a Coke, I had a coffee. And like read magazines in the, at the nail salon. And it's so funny because it's like, that's just who I am. So when I find YouTubers like that or vloggers, like I'm very attracted to that. I'm like, that's just something that's like, I love to watch in YouTubers, if that makes sense. And, uh, and then I just like binge watch their channel. But what's happening lately is that I'm noticing that like a lot of YouTubers that I used to be like that with haven't put, like I'll like, and I don't even like, to be honest with you, like I'll find somebody's channel and like, it'll be somebody, I can't, I, I can't even think right now of somebody. Well, Shep and RJ, or Will and RJ at Shep 69 are a good example. They haven't posted a video in three months. You know, it's like, so are you just not making videos anymore? Like, and I know people are gonna say nobody owes that to you or whatever, but it's like you get people really invested in your life and getting to know who you are. I mean, you're really like entertainment for us. And there are a lot of people that I go to and I watch on a daily basis and then they just, boom, they stop making videos. It was like a couple years ago, there was this like gay collab channel and there was this couple on there named Brian and Daniel. I've actually talked about them on here before. And they were from Nova Scotia. And I think they have s since like broken up. But like they just like one day just stopped making videos. And I literally was like devastated. There was like no announcement. There was like nothing about them. They were like on a like a collab with I think like Miles J and some other people. But like the the five gays a day or something like that, whatever that one is with that Ryan guy that does like the music videos and stuff. Does he even still make videos? I don't know, but I just was like, all of a sudden just out of the blue, they stopped making videos and I was like, what happened to them? You know, and I loved watching them and besides Will and RJ, they were like one of the very first like gay couples. So I'm very thankful when YouTubers like, no matter what it is that they're going through and, you, and I think it's very hard when they get on there and they're going through a breakup or whatever to get on there and be honest about it. But I'm thankful from this side of it because it's like, okay, like I've invested, you know, two years of watching your life and now one day you're just gone and I don't know why. I also don't understand as a person that makes YouTube videos how people just walk away from it like that. I mean, I really don't. But that's because I love it so much. I think I need my hat. I have this green hat, but I don't like to wear it. All right, I'll be right back. I literally started my car when I got back in the air from the gas station, and look what came up. Gix <laughs> Gixi. Gypsy by Lady Gaga, which is like hands down my favorite Lady Gaga song. I think that's meant to be. Don't you think that Lady Gaga, oh my God, can you guys all tweet her? She actually follows me on Twitter. I don't know how that ever happened, but she does. But can you guys all tweet her and tell her that Peter Mon, her biggest fan, will be there on Monday and that she should call me up on stage? Oh! Oh my God, I would faint a million faints if Lady Gaga had me up on stage. I would say, girl, you need to move over. I'm going to show you a little bit of rah, 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 rah. rah. I love that telephone video when <laughs> she does that. Oh my god, I used to know every dance move with that video. I mean, basically.
basically I'm Lady Gaga, but the male version of Lady Gaga, you know? Sometimes I'm the Anderson Cooper, I mean, the Andy Cohen, sometimes the Keanu Reeves, hardly ever the Keanu Reeves, the Stevie Nicks, and of course the Janis Joplin, I'll forever and ever the Janis Joplin of YouTube. But next Monday, I will be the Lady Gaga of Louisville and YouTube. <laughs> Louisville, it's Louisville. You, Louisville and YouTube. So watch out, Lady Gaga. I'm taking over next Monday night. If they, if I'm, if I come up, blah, 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 blah. if I go, and for some reason Lady Gaga cannot perform, I do believe that I know enough of her songs that I can uh, perform in her place. I just need one of those hair bows, <laughs> and I will be sad. I got a fan. I'm bringing my telephone, my drama phone. See telephone. I got my drama phone, I got my fans, and I just need a hair bow. And then I'm totally sad. I'm ready to go to Lady Gaga and be Lady Gaga. I'm ready to actually be Lady Gaga. <laughs> Gaga. <laughs> there's Lady Gaga and then there's me, and I'm Lady Gaga. <laughs> I am crazy. I am totally crazy. Oh well. I have loved her for so long though. that you are. I have to go to the bank and do some banking. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to listen to my audiobook. I don't really uh, have a whole lot to talk about tonight. I was telling Alex that tomorrow night, my Wednesday night candlelight meeting that I go to, it's going to be the last night that we have it because they're just as, the turnout's bad and I started getting kind of teary-eyed and he was like, well, are you sad about it? And I go, I don't know. And he was like, you're kind of sad about it, aren't you? And I go, I mean, yeah, I am kind of sad about it. And he was like, well, babe, I understand. He's like, you love that meeting. And... But, you know, it's interesting because, like, I talked about this actually, I think, earlier in the vlog. But, like, one of the things that, like, I wrote down the other day, like, in my notes that I wanted to work on with my counselor was this perpetual fear of dying and endings. I don't like endings whatsoever. My friends even joke that like, I don't play a song all the way through. Like I stop it before it's done. And, um, you know, I think like the only way to get through something is to buy is the only way to, to overcome something is to buy by working through it, not by getting over it, but by working through it. So, you know, I think tomorrow, because it's not like it's going to kill me anyway. I didn't always love to go. Trust me, I didn't love to drive a half an hour to this meeting, you know, at 9.30 at night when I was half tired and then get there. It was just me and my sponsor. But, you know, it'll be a good experience for me to practice endings in a positive, cathartic way, you know? So, okay, I'll be right back. It always kind of freaks me out when somebody pulls up behind me at the bank machine at like 1 o'clock in the morning. It's not even 1 o'clock yet, but you know what I mean. I cannot believe that I've almost been vlogging for a year. I was actually thinking about this the other day. I cannot think of the guy's name. His name Charlie. Who's the guy that vlo has vlogged like every day for so long? Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Are there a lot of vloggers like me that um, vlog every day and don't have shit view? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I have a good kind of like base following, but let's just be for real. It's not like my channel's at like 50,000 or 100,000 or 250,000 subscribers or anything like that. And I know it's probably because my videos are too long and people are like, I don't relate to him anyway. And, you know, why would I watch these long ass videos and stuff like that? But I think it's interesting. You know, I've like. It's like, once you've been doing this for a while, then you start questioning, it's like yesterday I was like questioning like, who am I, you know? And then it's like, then you start questioning like what you're doing. And I was thinking about this, like as far as like, wanting to like change some things up in um, January. And then I was like, but why? Like why change anything? Like why change what I've been doing? You know, like I think that one of the things that like has seemed to work recently for me is, Like, you know, like I post a short video and then I post a longer video and then I post, you know, 
a short video and then two longer videos. There's like kind of, you know, that way people can catch up on them. But I think the thing that's like, I don't know, the one thing I think makes my vlog different than other daily vloggers, really I do. And I'm not saying this like in a, there's no better or worse way because for me, I watch both. But like, you can really pick up my vlog at any time because every day is so completely different. So like, if you come in here today and you watch it, it's not like you have to watch the last 300 days to understand what's going on. Does that make sense? Like, it's not like I'm not gonna fill you in. And you, I mean, so like nothing, it's not like if you don't, if you didn't watch yesterday, you're not gonna know that, oh, today I'm having a baby or something like that. You know what I mean? Like. So they're basically just discussions. They're basically like, you know, video podcasts and which I love because I think, I mean, I love listening to podcasts anyway. So I loved, this is my thing of doing kind of a podcast kind of point of view. Um, I am still thinking about doing the podcast in January. Like I talked about, it'll probably happen later than that. I actually have an idea. I would like to do... So did you guys ever see the claymation version of Peter Cottontail where he goes to a holiday every month? Do you remember that one? Oh my God. And he goes to like Halloween and he goes to like Christmas and he collects eggs and he like tries to give away like Christmas eggs because he has to get rid of all those eggs. So he will. So like iron, old iron tail. Did you guys ever see that one? Okay. Well, it's like my favorite like Easter show ever, of which I know it's a religious holiday, but like, of course I loved Peter. I loved Easter because of Peter Cottontail, right? So, who is not the Easter Bunny, so it's so funny, but that show, it was Peter Cottontail and Old Iron Tail. So anyway, I really wanna get the script to it, which I'm sure is like real easy to get online somewhere. And then I wanna have like me and my friends read it. So that might be like where I start it because I would like to do very theatrical kind of stuff. If I do a podcast, my podcast will be like a variety show, like the Carol Burnett show. That is what it will be. It will have consistent characters. It will have regular people. It will have me telling stories. It will have funny news from across the world. You know, it'll have like, you know, Esther Sue's 103rd birthday. It'll be all of that. It'll be, that's what I want to, it'll be a funny variety show, you know, and characters like Vivian, Jane Vivian. Oh, darling, I've been drinking Gimlet's all night long watching that Lifetime movie network. Now, Gimlets, Jane, Gimlets. <laughs> fences, Jane. We watch Fences with Denzel Washington. You know, Fences. He directed it and acted in it, Jane. Well, Jane, I'm sorry that you don't go to the movies all the time, but that's your excuse for when you can't come over to my house. So if you're not going to the movies, then what are you doing, Jane? But anyway, so like, of course, we'll have like all kinds of characters on there. Earl might make a reprise and all that kind of stuff. I would love to do a podcast variety show. I, there's not really a whole lot out there like that. And I love the whole idea of bringing back like Garrison Keillor's Lake Wobegon Days, Carol Burnett show, all that kind of stuff. Like, I love that. And so I'm really thinking about doing that, but I need to get like five people that are willing to make a commitment to doing it on like a bi, like every other week. So like, because I don't think Alex will do it. So it'd be like Tanya and I, Melissa, Aaron, it's four of us. You know, I don't know. I'd have to, like, we're going to need a couple people. So, and then maybe Melissa's husband, because he is so good. I mean, you know, he's been, he was in a band forever. Um, and maybe he could do like the piano sounds, you know, or like when they go scary sounds and all that kind of stuff. And it could be like, oh, Jay. You know what I mean? Like that. It would be really funny. So um, that's kind of how I want it to be. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with it. I'm always thinking up ideas. I mean, I've been like that ever since I was a little kid. I'm always thinking of new ideas, you know? The one thing I'm really lacking in right now is really focusing on writing, and I really just need to narrow down. I actually thought to myself... Um, <laughs> I mean, it's stupid because I'm at home all day long with the dogs anyway. I was like, I should go get a cabin in the woods somewhere for two weeks and just write. Oh, yeah, like, and not make videos for two weeks, you know? I mean, it's like Alex comes home in the evening. We eat dinner and watch movies together on TV anyway, unless we have something to go to. Now, this next week, we have, are going to be quite busy together. We have, like, the whole, well... 
Okay, so I think Friday night we're going to see a movie with Melissa and Jay, so we're going to go see Word of the Orient Express. Saturday, I, we probably, I don't know, he'll either go out or Saturday is kind of our own thing night. Sunday, we're going to see Galanis. Monday, we're going to Lady Gaga in Louisville. Next Tuesday, we have marriage counseling. We were supposed to have it tonight, but he wanted to have the session by himself, and I didn't need to go, and we didn't feel like we had really any issues to work on, so he took the session to go talk about some stuff that he needed to work on. So, um, then I, so next Tuesday is our family, or marriage counseling, which means that we'll probably have dinner and a date after that, because that's usually what we do on Tuesdays. So, yeah. Boy, we'll be so sick of each other by next week. <laughs> I was gonna say, but other than seeing Alex in the evenings, like and going to meetings, it's not like I'm so damn busy that I couldn't just sit there and write for five hours straight. And I'm not a believer in writer's block. I feel like it's just not having the dedication, the commitment to sit down. I've been like finding 50 other things to do. I've been starting books and reading like three chapters and stopping. Like that's my thing right now. I don't know why I'm doing it. I just started Wonder by R.J. Palacio because the movie came out with Julia Roberts and I want to see it so bad. It looks so fantastic. And so many people have told me to read that book. And so I started it and I like instantly fell in love with it. Have you guys read this book? Oh my God, it is so good. I mean, right from the get-go, it's so good. And I feel like that's been a real problem lately is that I have read so many good books lately. between 10 and 12 well last month I read nine but typically I've been since like August I've been averaging like 10 and 12 books a month which has been really good and I just hit 50 books today that I've read for the year so last year I read 62 books this year I aimed for a hundred if I make it I don't really care but I want to be between like I would love to make it to a hundred but that's not gonna happen I would love to to get somewhere between 62 and 100 because at least that meant that I did better than I did last year. Every year I want to kind of like work on the year before. So realistically, if I could read 20 more books this year and hit 70, I would be very happy with that. I think 70 books in a year is like a good number, you know? But is it 72 would be like what? Six books a month? Six books a month isn't bad, I guess. It just makes me sad because as much as I read, had I been really like... There's so many books that I want to read that if I had really pushed the metal, pushed the pedal to the metal, I lean, um, then I would have like been reading 10 books a month between starting in January, <coughs> and I'd already be at 100 books, you know. But that's not the case. I'm not gonna scry. It's it's silly. It's a book. It's a booktuber thing to think that way. It's a bookish thing to wish. I mean, I I know people that read three and four hundred books a year. I don't know how y'all do it. But next year, and I have like recently too. Like every minute that I'm in my car, I like I don't listen to music as much anymore. I'm like always listening to an audiobook. And then if I'm at home and I'm like just laying on the couch or whatever and Alex is watching TV and it's something that I don't want to watch, I'm reading my Kindle and then, or I'm pulling out a book and reading it. So, um, you know, I just need to do more of that, I think. What is going on here? There's like major traffic. You can tell it's a construction zone, but it's like bad traffic too. Well, I'm going to get off here. I don't want to be on this thing while I'm in traffic. So, all right, you guys. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.